Okay, so after the latest update of Raspberry Pi Imager to 1.6, I figured I'd try and run my Raspberry Pi headless as it's so easy to set up now. And uh, so let's switch this on. All I've got in, I've got a Ethernet cable plugged in and a USB-C cable. You could do this with Wi-Fi, but I'm gonna use Ethernet. Uh, so if I switch on just the Pi, there we go. Okay, so the operating system on here would have started up now. So I'm gonna open up my Mac and we're gonna SSH into the Pi. Uh, so we're basically, there's no physical connection. This is gonna use Wi-Fi uh, and the Pi is connected to Ethernet. So what we need to do is open up a terminal and you can do this on loads of different devices. I'm just using a Mac because uh, I've, I've got one handy. Um, but also I'm gonna do remote desktop in a minute, uh, which can be used on pretty much anything. Android, I've got it on my iPad, um, the Mac OS, Windows, Linux, pretty much everything works with it. So let's switch over to screen capture on my Mac. Okay, so when you set up your Pi with Raspberry Pi Imager, it gives you a load of options. I'll show those at the end of this video. Uh, so right in the card, I just wanted to go through the SSH commands. So when you set it up, it automatically defaults to call the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi. Uh, so if we want to get into the Raspberry Pi, we type in SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi and hit return. So it's going to ask us for a password. You set that up on the initial bit. I used Pi as my password, so I've just typed in Pi. There you go. So I'm in now, I'm, I'm controlling the Pi, and so there's various different things I can do. I can do sudo raspi-config. So we've got things like system options, you can see here where you can enable, put passwords in, uh, all sorts of options on this. This is the standard thing that you would, uh, you would have on a Raspberry Pi anyway by doing sudo raspi-config, but it just means that you've got that little bit of extra setup within this. So if we go to finish to quit out of that, if we now try a couple of other things, so let's do hostname, Raspberry Pi, and we'll need this later on for the remote desktop part of it. So uh, if you haven't changed it, it's just gonna be Raspberry Pi, but if you have changed it and you've got something else up there, you'll need that later on in the remote desktop bit. We've also got hostname dash I, and this gives us our IP address on our network. Uh, that can be handy for remote desktop, but uh, in the case of the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it with the name. We can also do, who am I? And you can see it says Pi. So Pi is the user, and I've got the password set to Pi on this particular one as well. Also, if we wanted to troubleshoot a Pi, uh, so if a Pi's running a different program or doing a different service, uh, and you wanna have a look at the status of things, you can do HTOP and you can see CPU and memory usage are displayed, which is very low at the moment because I'm just SSHing into the Pi. It's just running the operating system, nothing else. If I want to quit out of that, I hit Control C. We can update the Pi with this. Uh, so if I was to do sudo at update, and uh, this will show loads of updates available because uh, I use the system where it sets up the Pi, but it just go straight into the operating system without performing any updates. So if I did want to use this a bit more, uh, I'm not going to do it right now because it doesn't help for the video, but I could run sudo apt and upgrade, or I could do sudo apt full dashed upgrade, which does the EEPROM and various other things as well. I also found uh, when I was looking through uh, SSH and, and the, the command line interface, I found this one, which I don't really use, but it's auto, sudo apt auto remove. And this is about things that have been updated and things that are no longer needed that it will automatically remove. It does do it with a full upgrade anyway, uh, but it's just another way of doing it. Now if I want to install some things on here, uh, I can do sudo apt install neofetch, which is also like a status monitor. Uh, it's already on there, so it's given me that message. So neofetch, there you go. And that tells me about my Pi 4. This is a four gig model. Uh, it's not overclocked and it tells you what operating system is running and things like that. But what if we want a bit more from it? Now, I don't really use um, the command line very much if I, if I don't have to. I would rather use a desktop interface, uh, but I know a lot of uh, Pi users do use their Pi's headless. It's just not something that has appealed to me much before. Now, if I want to use remote desktop, uh, there is one element that I need to install. sudo apt install XRDP, and this is a remote desktop program. 
So that'll install onto the Pi. As I say, it's already there, so we're fine. If I want to shut down the Pi, I can use this, sudo shutdown-h now. Um, but I'm going to move on to remote desktop because I much prefer it than SSH, although I do see the use of SSH and obviously people using it in organizations to control computers and things like that. It's very, very handy. So now if I want to switch to remote desktop, there's one thing I need to do and uh, that's reboot. So sudo reboot. So I can close that down now. While my Pi is rebooting, if I click on Safari, you can see Microsoft Remote Desktop uh, is an app that works with most devices. And I got mine through the App Store, but I've also got it on my iPad and it works with all sorts of devices. So if you install that and it's just straightforward to install. So if we start up Microsoft Remote Desktop, you've got to add a PC. So we click on here and uh, we need to type in the name of the Raspberry Pi. So this is Raspberry Pi dot local in my case, because I didn't change anything from the standard thing that Raspberry Pi Imager set up. I'm going to leave everything else as is and just hit add. So now if I double click on this, hopefully the Pi started up by now. There you go. So it's found something. So I'm going to hit connect. And I use the username as Pi and the password as Pi when I set mine up and hit continue. And there we have it. Now I have my Pi running on my Mac. So I'm gonna switch cameras now. And this is how it looks. Uh, it just feels like you're using a Pi, uh, but on this MacBook. Uh, and it actually feels pretty fast. Uh, I can't complain about it. It's, uh, it's pretty decent. If I call up the web browser and uh, do a search for, well, in fact, if I do it here and do HDR, I would imagine video is not gonna be good on this um, because it's remote desktop but we'll give it a try anyway <laughs> it's not oh actually let's give it the benefit of the doubt for a second because that Google pop-up would have slowed. yeah so you wouldn't you certainly wouldn't watch video or play games or anything like that on it but when you're using more static things so uh, say for instance something like ordinary web browsing uh, it's it's really not that bad so if I get a hot UK deals and uh, two fingers on the trackpad goes up and down as you would expect it to. Uh, so let's show it on the iPad as well, just to give you an idea of what's that, what that's like. So on the iPad, you can see pretty much works the same sort of way. You can use two fingers to move up and down. Uh, you can also zoom in and zoom out. Uh, same thing with the mouse pointer. If I want, say, this small menu, if I tap on the screen, uh, and now these are really, this is small writing. So if I wanted to go into uh, electronics, click on that. You can see that it comes up. If I want to do a search, I can click on the top bar here and start typing. And everything works fine. Uh, if I want to use it without this keyboard, I can detach that and uh, I can tap the keyboard on here. So if I was to start typing Raspberry Pi, you can see that comes up. I can lose the keyboard uh, and then I can click on something. So say for instance here, raspberrypi.org. And this gives me uh, various different desktops. And then there's a zoom option, but you can pinch to zoom anyway. But it uh, works really well on that, surprisingly well. I'm just installing the remote desktop app on this Samsung phone to see how it works with Android. That's installed now, so let's open it up and see how it works. So hit the plus, desktop, and here it is on Android. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, and uh, it comes up with a different login for some reason. I don't know if it's because it's timed out or something, um, but uh, if I hit OK on that, you can see that it brings me into the desktop and uh, Samsung in their wisdom cuts off the edge. But I can still access it because I can get my mouse pointer up there. So I wouldn't want to use it on this sort of size of display, but if you were desperate it is, uh, and you wanted to update something or install something, it is doable. Okay, so let's show you how to set it up with Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, so let's plug in the HDMI. Might as well use the Pi that I'm already using. 
see what happens when I when I plug it all in and everything. Keyboard. Doesn't show up straight away, um, but let's try remote desktop on here and see if we can get it to maybe reboot or something. Yes, it's working on here, although it's not outputting a signal. So I think I'm just going to do shutdown and reboot. See what happens. The Pi uh, momentarily went off and on again. Oh yeah, I've got a monitor light on now. You can see the blue light on there now. So I can switch into screen capture now. So this is uh, Raspberry Pi OS. This is the one I've been using the remote desktop with. And uh, it's not going to have Raspberry Pi Imager because for some reason they still don't include it, which I, I don't know why. So add remove software because it's, it's one of the best tools. Imager, scroll all the way to the bottom and here it is, Raspberry Pi Imager 1.6. Hit OK. Password is Pi on this one. Had to think because it's usually Raspberry if you haven't changed it, but I changed it to Pi uh, on the previous when I was setting it up. Okay, so that's done. So now we have a Raspberry Pi imager. There we go. Hit Control, Shift, and X to get extra options. So disable overscan. Set host name. I'm going to call it something else. Uh, let's call it. Let's call it Remote. Enable SSH. Set password, I'll do that as Pi again. Configure Wi-Fi, I think I am going to this time. Now it would normally have filled in the SSID, but as I've never set Wi-Fi up on this particular one, uh, this didn't come uh, already pre-filled. The password, it doesn't pre-fill. Was, there was a bit of confusion about my Pi News video. Uh, I think some people thought that it was something that it didn't do. Uh, but it does, it fills that in if, you're, if your operating system is already logged into Wi-Fi. The only thing it doesn't fill in is the password. But, weirdly, if you do this on a Windows device, it does fill in the password. So I put my password in. Let's just scroll down see if there's anything else that I need to change. Oh yeah, we'll do the locale settings. Uh, so, London GB is fine. Wi-Fi country GB is fine. Skip first run wizard, so that's the bit where it doesn't automatically update itself. So it means that you can basically log into it straight away with SSH. And then hit save. And then I need to choose my OS. I'm going to go with just the ordinary Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. So I need something to write to, uh, so I've got an SD card in an SD card reader. Pop that into one of the USB sockets on the back. As you can see, it's been recognized, so uh, I can get rid of that and that. Choose storage, that's my card, and hit write, and yes. Okay, that's all done, so I just need to shut that down. And boot it up with this SD card instead. So let's whip the old one out. So this is the newly written one. And so I'm going to restart it with the display this time just to show what happens. Resized root file system rebooting in five seconds. This first boot takes quite a bit longer than normal and it's already rebooted once within this process. And eventually the desktop comes up, so now it's ready for me to SSH in. Okay, so back on my Mac, uh, let's open a terminal. And then the command we need is not this one now, uh, because we want, we want Pi, but we want at remote, just because I named it differently just to try it. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes. Password is Pi. And I think we're in now, XRDP, and hit yes. And while this process is happening, the user of the computer, you can see the top screen, 
doesn't know anything's happening and everything appears as normal. So if I was to hit start, so I'm controlling it here, but also it's controllable here as well. So we need to reboot the Pi to enable remote desktop. So sudo reboot. And you can see the screen's gone off at the top. Much quicker reboot this time. So back onto the Mac. Okay, so now we can close down this and open up the remote desktop. And you can see this was the old one, Raspberry Pi local. I need to create a new one. So I'm just gonna go add, add PC. And I'm gonna call this remote.local. Hit add. Double tap on that. Hit connect. Pop the password in. So username is pi and password is pi. And we're in. Easy as that. And uh, this is using Wi-Fi now because I set up the Wi-Fi before. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.